Okay, well, I bet you're itching to get started and actually um, open a design and maybe even stitch a design from the software. It's Im important that you actually look at existing designs to understand how they're made up so that you can understand what you're doing with your digitising. So it's a great place to start by opening a an existing design and looking at it. Now... We're going to go to Embroidery Library, but before we do, to have a look at the inbuilt designs. But before we do that, there are some tutorials I'd like you to watch that Benina have done, um, and they're in the Featured Tutorials. So if you click on Tutorials, click on Featured Tutorials, and up in the Search All Tutorials, just left-click there to activate your cursor up there, and type in Embroidery Library. And click on the search symbol. That will filter out the, all the video tutorials about the Embroidery Library. Now I'd like you to watch the first three. So that's number 201, 202 and 203. Okay, so now you've watched those videos, you will know that you can manage all your designs in the embroidery library, whether they be your um, inbuilt designs that came with the software or the designs on your computer. You can access those and open them or do all sorts of other things with them too. What I want to do now is open one of the inbuilt designs and just have a look at what it's made up of and have a little bit of a talk about that before we actually start digitizing so you can see what you're aiming for. So you will also know from watching the videos that you can go straight to the embroidery library from the home page with this button here. So I'm going to left click on that to open embroidery library. Now, you may not have understood everything they said about all these icons and things up here, but we will use them um, throughout the course and you will hopefully start to understand what everything is doing. So to open an inbuilt design, you need to click on um, the, in, well, the embroidery machine at the top of the navigation. We need to know where we're going to find this inbuilt design. So the embroidery um, tool will open all designs that are came with the software or that you have saved to the embroidery library um, in the My designs my machine files or my cutting files folders so that will show all of those mixed up together we don't want to look at um, designs you might have made at this point in time um, we want to look at the only the ones that came with the software so we can narrow it down to that in this navigation pane by clicking on public embroidery and that will only show embroideries that came with the software and because I have version 8 still on here on my computer as well, I'm going to have to choose version 9. And it, that will show all the ones that came with the version 9. And then you can expand that by clicking on the little arrow to the left, which will open up all these folders, which are the subject folders for the software. So we can go to animals and bugs, for instance. And I'll get you to go there by clicking on animals and bugs. And... As you can see, all your designs should show up here. Now, if they're not showing up here, then you may have played around with this with this button up here, which says showing. So in order to see the inbuilt designs, you need to show all in one design files. And there's a drop down menu there, um, which you can choose that from. So you can show all in one design files, or you can show all machine files, all embroidery files or all artwork files and then you can further specify down here so if you only want to look at 
um, PES files. For instance, you can narrow it down to all the PES files, etc. Now, why you need all in one design files showing up here is because the inbuilt designs that come with the software are called all in one design files and they are labeled with um, art 80 or art 90 the file type is an art file your machine won't read these files as they are they are actually um, the full um, digitized version of the, of the design with all the information about the stitch types the densities the color changes the um, shapes all the possible and stitch angles lots and lots of information are in these files they're much larger larger than machine files machine files are basically very limited in the amount of information they have because the machine doesn't need to know all that information um, it just needs to know where to move the hoop to for each stitch and when to stop for a color change when to trim in some cases um, and a couple of other bits of s small information that, that that are included in machine files okay so if you've got the creator version you may not see all of these designs as you don't have quite as many designs as the designer plus version of the software has but you should be able to find this mini ladybug art 80 now you might need to scroll down um you could it's pretty easy to find it's a fair way down but it's pretty easy to find it's in the animals and bugs folder if you can't find that exact ladybug any ladybug similar will work the default is alphabetical order so you can see this one's H E something and then we've got K M M M so if you scroll down till you get to the M's just before the ends you'll find the mini ladybug art 80 now I want you to left click on that so that it gets a blue border around it a pale blue border and that means it's selected now depending on what you've chosen in this layout option on the top left here um, just below the home button you will see different things in this right hand side so at the moment I'm seeing let me just double check the name of it the details pane so my navigation pane is showing all the time I can to deselect that and hide it you need to just click on it and it will disappear and to bring it back you just click on the drop down menu and click on it again so I would leave this showing all the time at the moment um, while you're learning the details pane is the next option and this will give you all the information about this design that you might need to know for instance the height the width the colors so if you were going to stitch this design out um, you might want to the, the picture might not give you a, a clear enough idea of the size etc because it's a thumbnail so you might want to look over here to see is it going to be the right size for your project etc um, alternatively you could choose in here to have the preview pane showing which will um, give you a larger image of the design so you're pretty clear you've chosen the right one it will still give you the size etc now once you've selected it you can open it in art canvas to have a look and that's what i want us to do and uh, not art canvas i beg your pardon embroidery canvas to have a look and see what is happening with it um, as far as how it was made how the design was made so while it's selected you've got some options under the manage designs now you can just open a selected design and it will open it with that name the same name as the original design in the embroidery canvas the problem with that is that with the in, um, inbuilt designs there is a possibility you could accidentally write over the design because it will have the same name and if you alter it in any way and then save it it will save over the top so in order to give it a different name automatically so that you don't do that it is safer to go new from selected when opening the all-in-one inbuilt designs so let's click on new from selected and that will take us through to embroidery canvas which is where all the digitizing fun is going to happen 
but we're, we're going to just examine this design first up. Now you'll notice that I have a grid showing here. You may have a hoop showing as well. There are some icons up the top right here that allow you to turn those on and off. It's just a matter of clicking on the icon. So if it's highlighted blue, it's on. If it's not highlighted blue, it's off. So the grid is on, so it's highlighted blue. If I hover over it, uh, it'll tell me what the actual tool is. It'll say sh um, show grid. And you can also, um, by right clicking on it, you can get to the grid settings, but we'll talk about that later. So left clicking will just turn it on and off. So I'm going to left click on there to turn the grid off so it's not confusing us. It is um, something that you can change. So at the moment, mine's one centimeter squares. So you can see this little ladybug is very, very small in the screen. And, and it's also a very small design. It's only about one and a bit centimeters tall. So I'm going to zoom in so that it shows up bigger. Now you can zoom with your mouse wheel like I have just done there. Or you can come up here to your zoom tools. And you can zoom one to one. We'll show you it at actual size. So that's why it's so tiny. And that's what the default is when you open the design. This next one along will zoom to fit. So that will increase the size of the design on the screen. It doesn't change the size of the actual design. It just changes how you're looking at it um, to fit the whole workspace screen, this area here. So if I click on that, we'll get that right up to this size here. Um, and then here, you can zoom to a specific area of the design window. So if I undo what I just did... So if I go back to one to one, let's just turn that grid off so it's not confusing. So I clicked on it so it's not highlighted. Um, left clicked. And we go choose this um, little icon here, the zoom one. Left click on that and you will get a magnifying glass uh, your cursor will change to a magnifying glass. Then you can left click and keep your left mouse down and drag a box around the area you want to look at. So, um, and it will zoom in. And I could zoom in again by getting that tool and zoom it in again. Alternatively, you've got a drop down option here with percentages. So you can zoom into a specific percentage amount. At the moment those two zooms brought me into 1281 times. So you know it's a small design. Um, I can also choose to fit here which will as I said fill the whole screen. So now you're familiar with zooming we can have a look at the design. Now it's I'm looking at the design in what we call artistic view or some people call it true view. So it's the software is simulating the stitches to look like thread. Now, if yours doesn't look like this, it means you're not in that view. And that view is easily turned on and off with this icon here, show artistic view. And you can use the icon and left click on that and that will turn it off into design view or you can turn it back on again by left clicking on it again. So you can toggle between the two views by left clicking on this icon. You can also toggle between the two views by using the t letter T on your keyboard. T meaning true view. So that's why there's two names for it. And that's because of over the years they changed the name in the various um, iterations of the software as they as it progressed. So I've just clicked T on my keyboard. I'm going to click T on my keyboard again to get it back to the true or artistic view. Over on the right you should see your color film. Now if that's not showing there's a little icon up the top here called color film and it just looks like a little film strip. So you can left click on that and that will open the color film docker. I've got another morphing effect docker open at the moment. So I'm going to close that. So um, these the, that gives me more workspace here. In order for the color film to stay there, you need to make sure this little drawing pin up the top is upright so that it stays there. And you to do that, you just click on it. So if I left click on that, it will... Um, not pin it in open so to speak so now i've got the color film down here sideways in a little 
tab. So I, if you've got it there, you can hover over it and, and or click on it and, and it will open and you'll see the little drawing pin is sideways. So click on that little drawing pin so that it becomes upright and it will stay there. You'll use the color film a lot. So you probably want it there all the time. So once you opened it, um, click on that drawing pin and it will um, stay there. Unless you've got a very small screen, laptop screen or something to work on and you that's taking up too much real estate. Then you can just auto hide it by clicking on the drawing pin. All right. So in the color film, I'm seeing little squares indicating the two colors of the design. And I'm seeing the parts of the design that make up those colors. Now, if you don't see those little color squares, that means you're in objects view. So at the top of the color film on the top left you'll see show objects so just click on that and that will show every single individual object an embroidery design is made up of objects that are stitched one after the other to create the design so as you can see the first object that stitches is the red body of the um, ladybug and you can see that it's um, flat across the top here where it goes across here and it's got a little V shape under here that's because they have shaped it so that it doesn't isn't completely covered by this black piece here um, it's not always good to have stitches on top of each other because it does start to get thick and hard when you're sewing so um, where it's a where possible you try to avoid that but I mean these little spots here are stitched directly over the top of that red there's no gaps underneath those because they're just a small bit of stitching and it would be worse to have gaps under those in case you got um, issues of gaps showing so I will talk more about that later on but the important thing right now is to know that we our design is made up of objects the other thing you might be able to see if I zoom in even further is that the objects overlap to a certain extent. They're not just butting up against each other. We can see that um, even clearer if we just look at the outlines of the design. So up here in the icons, we've got an outline, show outlines. If I click on that, that will actually create some outlines for each of the objects. You may be able to just see a black outline coming around here. Now I can actually hide the stitches and see the outlines of the objects that were created. So to hide the stitches, you've got, you can click S on your keyboard or click on this show stitches icon just to the right of the um, true view icon. There's a um, dashed zigzag icon. Click on that and all your stitches will disappear. They haven't gone, you haven't deleted them, it's just that they're not showing. And we can see here that there's quite a bit of overlap between the red and the black areas. We can also see that happening down here. The red area comes right out to here and the black area covers it right out to there. The reason you overlap your objects is because when you stitch there is a certain amount of pull even with the best stabilizer in your embroidery machine and the best tension and everything else fabric is not like paper thread is not like ink and so you need to allow for that in creating your designs but as I said the important thing is to note that we've got objects now I'll close those I'll, um, I'll bring those stitches back I should say and I'll turn off the outlines for the moment. The other thing you can see in your design if you um, would like to are the needle penetrations but you can't see them unless you're not in true view so click on this one so that we're going into design view or out of artistic view. If you zoom in really close you might be able to see little white dots at the end of each stitch and they're actually the needle penetrations and if I go in here you can see there's a little white dot here there's another one here um, and there's one at the end I'm going to change the background of this design just temporarily so you can see those more easily so to do that you come up to the word design in the top menu and you can go to background and display colors and I'm just 
going to do the solid color I'm not going to worry about the hoop because we haven't got a hoop showing so if I want to edit that I can go into a blue color for instance and go okay now my backgrounds blue I can see those needle penetrations so much easier um, it's not so easy on the eyes when you're digitizing to have that color but you may want to do that at some stage so you can see that to stitch this red part um, the machine is going to put a stitch the needle is going to penetrate here 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 and so on so um, that's the information that your sewing machine needs so that it moves the hoop to the right place so when you're digitizing those needle penetrations will be created automatically once upon a time before the advent of all this new software digitizers had to actually manually plot every needle penetration <laughs> on a very antiquated computer so we are very lucky now that we can actually create areas of fill stitch and um, running stitch and outlines and the software will work out where the needle has to penetrate and create those needle points automatically for us so what we've learned is that a, a design is made up of objects um, with stitches inside them that are going to tell the machine where to move to now in the next video we're actually going to create some objects ourselves and see how that all works